Hello, hello. Wait a minute. Okay, had to make sure my microphone was on. And while you are getting on, I'm going to share this in a few of my favorite spots. All right. Give you just a second. And if you are watching this on the replay, make sure you hashtag replay so that I know that you were here. I really do appreciate my replay viewers. And you can skip ahead to about a minute and a half to get to the content. I hope you are having a fantastic day. Any day is above ground is a fantastic day. And you get a chance to do it all over again. So let me share this out while you're getting on. I'm moving slow. There's one. Hello, hello. I'm going to share one more spot and then we're going to get going. Hi, Miss Garlinda. All right, there we go. I'm ready. Okay, awesome. Welcome. My name is Lysandra Everett. I am the home business tax lady. I help home business owners win the tax game by helping you keep more of the money that you make and paying less to Uncle Sam in taxes. But I'm also an affiliate marketer and I show you how to use this internet to build your business. And today I want to share with you four monetization strategies for your live broadcast. I just got through watching this great video by Bob Heilig. Okay. Bob is Bob is my new best friend right now. He really is. He's a uh, someone great to follow. So you can find him on YouTube, Bob Heilig. But one of the things that he talked about is um, monetization strategies, and I really never thought about these things as, as monetization strategies until he really put them into context. So I wanted to share them with you. So hopefully, this is something that's going to help you, uh, you know, help you grow your business as well. Because listen, there's nothing like like live broadcast, whether it's on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram stories, Periscope. There's nothing like live streaming that is going to help you build that know, like, and trust, you know, over any other medium. Uh, live streaming is probably the best thing that has ever been created for, uh, you know, for a small business owner to really reach their audience and to build that no like and trust because otherwise it takes a really long time. Live stream has helped to speed that up so we can get to the results sooner. Okay. So number one, the first thing that he talked about was using a call to action. Okay. The call to action is that you want to tell your audience to do something. I'm getting my notes up because, <laughs> because my notes went away. Hold on. Okay. So um, he talked about using a call to action because you really want to tell your audience what to do. You want to tell them, go here, subscribe here, click here, join me here, do something. You've got to tell your audience what you want them to do, okay, and be very explicit about it. Uh, one of my calls to action, if you've seen any of my, of my videos, is click here, enter your email address, watch the video, okay? It's very explicit. So you've got to have that call to action so your audience knows what you want them to do. Number two, proactively reach out to people who engage in your content. Here's the thing. Believe it or not, when you start building an audience, you really become a mini celebrity, okay? No, you're not, you know, Will Smith celebrity or Oprah celebrity, but you do build a level of celebrity. And so when you reach out to people who engage in your content, you are really letting them know that they are being seen. Nothing is going to build you know, that no like factor and definitely the trust factor, then you reaching out to someone who's engaging in your content because they're feeling like, oh my gosh, this person actually took the time to respond when so many people don't engage, okay? So be proactive with people who engage on your content. 
on your uh on your live streams say hey Vaughn thank you for sharing hey uh Carlette great to see you hey Cynthia how's the baking going right so you really are letting your your audience know that you see them you recognize them and especially when you start to remember what they do right so you know they're feeling like they're being seen they're being heard and that they matter so that is what is so important about building that audience and being proactive to reach out to them because then they're going to be more inclined to buy what you're selling. Okay. <laughs> Number three, throw right hooks every often. Okay. So you got to learn to ask for the sale, right? You, it's, it's okay to ask for the sale. So for instance, if you have been giving content, 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 right? We give valuable content to our audiences for us, our, you know, us content producers, we spend our time giving valuable content to our audiences. And so once we've been giving, 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 we have earned the right to ask for the sale. And where people go wrong is they spend so much time asking for the sale that the audience doesn't know them, right? Because you see the people, right? They go promote, 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 promote. And all you see is product, 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 product. And you're sitting like, okay, well, what's the value in your product? Okay, but when you're giving your audience the value, you know, if you're selling a product, showing them what the product can do for them, how they can use the product, you know, what's in it, all of that stuff that's going to bring value to your audience. When you've been bringing that kind of value to your audience, then you have earned the right to ask for the sale. Okay, so, uh, but you got to make sure you're giving the value though. That's the important thing and giving it consistently. Okay, can I say that? Because what happens is <laughs> we start, right? We start out on fire and then we think nobody's watching and then we quit. Well, let it, listen, you can build a business part-time, but you cannot build a business sometime, okay? So even if you consistently go live once a week, it's better than five days, then nothing for three weeks, and then two days. No, but if you, whatever you are, can be consistent in, that's what you should do. And when you have that consistency, people start to trust you to know, just like they can turn on the TV and expect to see the Oprah show or Chris Lee Knows Best. That's my guilty pleasure, y'all. <laughs> But just like people can expect to see that, they need to be able to expect to see you. You know that, you know, if you've been watching me on Facebook Live, you know Monday through Friday, 9 o'clock-ish, I'm here unless I'm traveling and I physically cannot do a live broadcast, right? I mean, these right here, you don't expect these because, you know, it's kind of a pop-up thing. But you can pretty much bet your bottom dollar that Monday through Friday, 9 o'clock, you're going to see Lysandra's face going live. That is what your audience expects of you. When you do that consistently, they begin to trust that you will be there and they will be there. And then as you build that trust factor, you have to earn the right to ask them for a sale, to ask them to book an appointment, to ask them to buy something. You've earned that right, okay? And then the last one is number four is to invest into your network, nurturing relationships. Okay, so nurturing relationships has not been happening on this grand thing called social media. People have lost the art of building a network and building relationships. You can build relationships on Facebook. It just takes a little bit longer. What do I mean? So when you get a new friend, you inbox and say, hey, how are you? And then they upchuck all of their products all over you. And you sitting there like, I just said hello, right? And so, you know, because the, the competition is, I'm gonna sell to you before you try to sell to me. And really, when you're first meeting, nobody should be trying to sell to anybody unless somebody has reached out to you specifically to say, hey, I saw your post about this and I'd like to buy it. I mean, we ain't going to say no. We don't turn down no money. We ain't doing that, right? I'll turn down nothing but my collar. But what I'm saying is when you meet a new connection, you should be about building that relationship, finding out about them, you know, finding out even if your product or service would even fit this person, okay? Be okay with telling someone, what I don't believe what I have will work for you. They will trust you more by saying that than you for you to try to sell them something that doesn't work. 
okay? Be okay with saying to someone, I don't think this product is gonna work for you and this is why I don't believe that, okay? You'd be amazed at how much loyalty you can build by saying this ain't for you. Okay. And, and, you know, and just being honest with them instead of trying to sell, 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 you know, just the great thing about Facebook chat is you get to record all of your conversations. So if the last time you talked to Sue, her um, son went to the swim meet. Well, the next time you talk to Sue, you scroll up and see what happened. Hey, Sue, how did Joe do at the swim meet? And Sue is going to be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe she asked about Joe in the swim meet, right? So you really start to get to know people and, you know, and, and get to know about them, their lives. I mean, Facebook, I mean, sometimes people post entirely too much on Facebook, but, you know, review their profiles for heaven's sake and see, you know, what you have in common. It might be that you're both moms. It might be that you both crochet. It might, you know, who knows what you might have in common, but you really won't know until you really start to nurture those relationships and really get to know people and what they're about. You might meet someone that's, you know, and you find out, okay, this, this person has a child, you know, has a special needs child. And you might know someone with the same, you know, that has a child with the same special need and you connect these two together. And suddenly you've helped someone build a community. So you've really got to work on investing in those relationships, even in the ones online, right? Asking, hey, how you doing? You know, how can I help you? Uh, you know, just, it just being generous, really being generous without expectation of receiving anything, right? Just being actually genuine, being authentic, right? Being yourself. Because see, here's the thing about being yourself. People are going to either love you or they're going to hate you. And the truth is you want to focus on the people who love you and repel the ones who hate you, okay? <laughs> That's just life. But when you focus on, and we usually get it wrong. Somebody, some hater comes on um, on our live streams and leaves ugly comments. They, We give more attention to that one hater than we do all the people who are up there, you know, throwing pom-poms and marching bands and all of that, but we give attention to that one person that's being negative. No, you've got to nurture the positive relationships in your life you know, you are, whether it's on social media or what have you, and, you know, reach out and say, hey, thanks, I really appreciate you um, being on my live broadcast. Like Lorvel, you guys, Lorvel's on my live broadcast almost every day, and I appreciate that, right? And, you know, Miss Garlinda, I know she pops on whenever she gets the chance. So, and Vaughn, that's my student, you guys. Vaughn is a fantastic event planner, and she's just bossing it out right now. So I had to throw that in there. But anywho, but really, um, spend time getting to know people. You know, don't just try to sell right off the bat. Really get to know people. Find out what's going on with them. You know, see whether you can help them or not. And it might be not. It might be you need to refer them to somebody else. Even if you refer them to somebody else, you're still helping them. Okay? So, you know, so that, and you might not think about building uh, relationships as a monetization strategy, but the truth is, that it is. And the reason it's a monetization strategy, because even if that person can't buy from you, they're going to know somebody who will probably use your product. And then they're going to say, listen, um, you know, so-and-so was very honest with me and said, this product wasn't for me, but I think it will work for you. And I know you can trust this person. And so that referral is based on relationships. So you got to nurture those relationships, guys. Okay. So yeah, so those are the four things. All right, let me um, bring them back up because my <laughs> thing went down again. Okay, reaching proactively reaching out to people that engage in your content, using calls to action at the end of your videos and live streams, throw in your right hooks every so often, ask for the sale, okay? Be willing to ask for the sale. And four, invest in your network. Build those relationships. Don't be afraid to do that, okay? So listen, that's it, guys. That's it. Okay, so listen, I do have an ask, okay? I do have an ask. So if you have not liked my page at Home Biz Tax Lady, please like my page. I would really appreciate that because I'm going to be spending a lot more time on my Facebook fan page than I do 
here uh, on my profile. So yeah, so I would appreciate that. All right, so thank you so much, guys. Have a fantastic Nor Noreen says you're so funny. Thank you, Miss Noreen. All right, you guys, I got a boogie. I will see you all next time. Bye.